Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm going to talk about uh, the current state and the work we've done in our project of implementing and formalizing matching logic in Lean, uh, which is a project done, uh, funded by RV and in collaboration with uh, the Institute for Logic and Data, and Data Science. Um, okay, so I guess most people know here what Lean is, but just very briefly, it's both a dependently typed functional programming language and also an interactive theorem prover. Uh, recently, it gained a lot of traction in the formalized mathematics community. It has a large and fastly growing library of formalized mathematics with, with various uh, research level or let's say fields level, uh, fields metal level mathematics formalized in it. So this is the main tool uh, that we use. Okay, so the overall goal and idea of the project is to um, essentially create a link between the K framework and Lean as a mean of, in the end, bringing um, interactive theorem proving capabilities in connection with the K framework. Um, so to this end, what we have done so far is uh, implement a formalization of matching logic in Lean. Um, this includes so the syntax, the standard proof systems, various uh, proofs within matching logic as well as meta-theoretical results. Um, we haven't yet built an ITP for matching logic in Lean. That's uh, a much more advanced goal. Um, in the future, we want to also be able to import case statements from uh, case statements into our formalization. And we also worked already on translating matching logic proofs from our Lean formalization to the uh, already existing MetaMath implementation of, of matching logic done by Xiao Hong and, and others. So, I guess many people here are familiar already with matching logic. To be clear, by matching logic, by simple matching logic, I will mean the applicative version of matching logic from from here on. So there are no um, no sorts, and we only have a, a binary application. Um, when we started, the standard formulation included bottom as a primitive construct, but uh, it was later understood that bottom can be also defined as mu xx, but we haven't yet adapted the, the formalization to that, but that's uh, somewhat inconsequential for the, for the formalization. Um, here to point out one of probably the, the largest theoretical difference from the way we formalize it and the way it's usually presented on paper is that normally when forming the pattern mu x phi here, you require phi to be positive for x, meaning that uh, no negative occurrences of x are allowed in phi. And that's necessary for, uh, for soundness reasons, but we uh, discovered, actually Leo proposed that we could just drop the requirement here and only add it in one crucial step later in the proof system. So in some sense, it's um, a bit more general than the usual matching logic as you can construct more patterns than usually here. And so the, this is the essentially the standard semantics of applicative matching logic. The main difference is that given that we don't require uh, phi to be positive for x when forming mu, you can no longer give the standard semantics there because you can just say the least fixed point of some functional because uh, that functional is no longer monotone and, can, and possibly does not have a, a least fixed point. But you can just, but you can define the semantics of the non-positive mu to be, be this intersection here, which, uh, Essentially, it is a master task way of constructing the fixed point, the fixed point, which may not get a, a least fixed point here. But if the if phi happens to be positive for x, then that expression there, that intersection, 
is actually the least fixed point. So in that sense, this generalizes the, the standard semantics. Right? Uh, okay, I won't go into much detail about the, the formalization, but it's all um, inductive types for the different construction of constructions of matching logic. If you know if you know Haskell, you can think of this as algebraic data types. Right? So right, and you see here that mu is not uh, in mu. There is no requirement for for positivity here, and then you can of course define the usual the usual uh, derived connectors like conjunction, existentials, and so on and so on. Right. Sorry. Uh, no, no. So I, I mentioned is that uh, we could have we could drop we could drop it, but uh, the definition is is from before we we, we realized that we could drop it. So we, we we should change this, but it's it should be a a pretty small change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Also, the thing is that in the end, what you will do zero knowledge proofs on is not really the lean formalization. So even even then, you could translate bottom to mu x x in the in the final format that you that you that you export. Right. So in principle, you could even introduce more syntactic sugar as part of the definition because you can desugar it later when you when you export it. Right, and uh, yeah, maybe most importantly, the proofs are defined like like this for the time being. So we have again an, an inductive type for representing proofs of of patterns. So the uh, even though the matching logic proof system is a Hilbert style proof system, essentially the proofs are uh, tree like in their in their, in their definition because they are they are inductive types, but. Uh, yeah, what I want to emphasize here, I, I don't include the, the whole proof system here, of course, but what I am, want to emphasize here is that the prefix point rule is the only rule that requires the positivity in order for soundness to, to still hold. All the other proofs uh, are sound even if you don't require patterns to be to be positive. So here is the only the only positivity requirement in the needed in the whole proof system. Right. And this is a small example of how a proof is written, a formal matching logic proof is written now into formalization. I think if you have ever seen a like a pen and paper Hilbert style matching proof of matching logic, this is somewhat familiar. So you have the lines of the proof and the statement and the, the, the principle by which by which you prove it. So this is uh Pretty familiar for a working logician, let's say, but this is it is at the same time pretty uh, hard to come up with proofs for complicated examples and so on. So that's uh, that's what I meant in the beginning that one of the goal is to build a more advanced ITP so that you don't need to write proofs like this, but some more high level tactics that in the end generate something like like this. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the main thing. It, it, it is in some sense what you, what you said about an interactive theorem approval earlier. I think Lean is also a good choice. It has a lot of, uh, it is very extensible and has a lot of meta programming capability. So it's a, it's a good system to build an, an embedded interactive theorem improver within. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, yeah, as you see, as you hear, these these conjunctions are are notations here. They are not primitive. 
the the so so this is phi and psi here and this is conjunction is the like the usual sign for conjunction so this is phi and psi implies exists x phi and psi right so this is an example of the usage of of uh, of the of uh, of conjunction So well, the, the yeah, yeah. This, this is an example of a notation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, the other derived connectors are just notations, so you can just write them as usually on paper. But they are, they are definitions in terms of the primitive constructs of matching logic. Yeah. And so for for all for new and definedness and and everything. Okay, so given all I said, you, someone might ask, well, you could in principle do all, this, all these things in an, a programming language that is not an interactive theorem prover. You could do this, you could do what I showed already in Haskell. So what's the advantage of Lean being an ITP? Well, one advantage is what I previously mentioned that you, you can also build upon its interactive proving capabilities to build a uh, theorem prover specialized for, for matching logic, but you can also, prove meta-theoretical results about your formalization, which you would not do in a normal pro programming language. So for instance, oh. so that's a, that's, a, that's a syntactical theorem, right? Oh. Or, uh, or, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, we haven't done it, but as long as there is a proof on paper, we could just formalize the proof on paper here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for, for, for now, the, the most complicated uh, proofs come from proving the deduction theorem, which involves, you know, some, some, some previous... Yes, yes. Yes, that's the 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 one of the next parts that I will talk in the end, right? So, yes. Yeah, so for example, we have a formalized proof of the soundness theorem done by Andrei Bordusha, which is uh, somewhat necessary here, given that we've changed the usual semantics. So someone might might uh, complain that it, it not the it, the modified semantics and the lack of positivity is somewhat untrusty, untrustworthy. So we have uh, that kind of proof and also meta-theoretical proof transformation, let's say like the deduction theorem, which are also useful when actually carrying out concrete proofs, right? Okay, so that's uh, about the formalization. One other thing that we've worked on is on translating proofs from the, the previous formalization into the formalization in in metamath so for those who don't know metamath is a very small proof checker probably the most the most simple one at least that i've seen uh, that brings the advantage that it it is in some sense easier to trust in regards to its implementations right and there are a lot of uh, independent third party implementations you can even you could even implement your own quite quite easily if you if you don't trust those so it has that advantage um, the only main drawback at first is that is it is quite quite awful to to read and actually write metamath proof. So you need something higher level than than to actually write metamath from from scratch. So this is a part of a, of a I don't remember what, what what matching logic theorem, but a pretty small trivial matching logic theorem which ended up having a thousand lines proof like this. So so it's not really feasible to to write by hand. Yeah, so to, uh, because of this, we want to implement in this uh, translation here. And uh, now we'll talk about a bit about what we've done. So let me first mention some limitations of MetaMath, at least some technical limitations that we've encountered in performing this translation. So as far as there is no really a way to uh, express meta-theoretical 
result in MetaMask, like the deduction theorem, right? And uh, one thing that is a, a bit of a technicality, but quite problematic in practice is MetaMask does not really have a notion of a definition. So you, you, you can introduce some notations like bottom, but you can just replace one by the other. You have to explicitly mention that you want to replace something by its notation. So that's uh, quite difficult when wanting to translate something higher level like lean or cock or something that has this kind of, of definition. And yeah, so uh, some choices are different between MetaMath and the lean formalizations and uh, those had to be addressed. So so for this, we, uh, we had two, let's say parallel approaches. Uh, one which uh, works at this point for uh, a large class of cases. There are some 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 missing uh, some missing cases, and also something that is more experimental called here the the generic implementation. So, just just emitting metamask proofs is is rather routine. I won't I won't uh, go into detail here because you can just uh, recurse on the proof and just just translate it essentially. Um, Going from lean to metamask, I mean. So I didn't try to. No, all I'm doing is all I'm going. All I'm going is lean to metamask at this point. No, 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 no. But it. Yeah. So that. But still, in this direction, there are problems because, for instance, you would like to. So in lean, so let's say you have this simple theorem here that phi implies phi. Uh, and you would like it to well, get a metamask proof that says that phi implies phi where phi is some pattern and pattern variable. Uh, but you can't really do that with, with this approach because this is not actually a proof in lean, but it is a function mapping each pattern phi to a, to a proof. Yeah, so here, yeah, so it's, it's, it, it, it is under this binder, so you cannot just go under the binder and do recursion on the proof. So all, all you can do is just instantiate it with concrete patterns like phi zero and get a metamask proofs for, for any phi zero that you, you might need. But that's somewhat unsatisfactory and also the, the size of the metamask file blows up, right? If you, if you do that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. So the yeah, so these kind of discussions do, did appear frequently on the, you know, the ML formalization meeting that we had, but uh, there wasn't some consensus on what should it be because you know we have some some problems with it. The Coke people maybe have some other problems, so and I'm a bit out of the loop right now as to what the the new format is. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I, these are um, pitfalls that I mentioned. One other thing that we discussed there is that the metamath formalization does require the positivity of patterns when, for, when forming new x phi. So, and for this, I really don't know the answer. We also, I mean, I, I propose there that, we, that the metamath formalization could be changed as to not required positivity when forming mu x phi and all requiring in the proof system like we do. So in this way you can prove, let's say, mu x not x implies mu x not x, for instance, in the linear formalization, but you cannot write that into, into metamath. But uh, yeah, at that point, uh, I... Uh, I think 
Well, so I guess so matching law in the usual form in the usual formulation, you require phi to be positive for for x. So you are not allowed. So mu x not x is not a pattern, right? In the standard formulation, not x. Yes. Yeah, but but in lean it is, and you can prove that it that it implies itself, right? Okay, so if you have a formal result on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so what we did in Lin is. You can also think of it as all your implementation detail, and you can just uh, reject the exportation of proofs that involve this kind of this kind of patterns here. As a, so, this is actually what we do right now. Um, okay, so you can do propositional reasoning on non-positive uh, positive patterns. Let's say. And, and I don't know if that allows you to prove something interesting that would not be uh, no, provable either. No, no, no. The proof system and the, the semantics and the semantics and the soundness. But uh, yes, the proof system. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so yes, yes, that's why, yeah, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, so, so you're right about that. So you're right that we, at least, it, it, this should have a, like, uh, a result that says, that says what you what you said. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, uh, but we don't have that for now. So yeah, that's also something to think about whether this is best to keep it this way and try to prove that, or it's better to uh, yeah, to add the positive because that that's uh that's not difficult to do at this point. So yeah. Okay, and then there's also a different kind of approach that goes rather than from lean object level to the lean meta programming level, which uh addresses some of the, the issues before can you can just look inside the binder and translate uh, lean meta variables to, to pattern variables in in metamask but that's more uh, more work in progress okay and to end to discuss what you're what we're working on on now is uh well first implementing the many sorted version of matching logic on which core uh, is my understanding that it is based on so first of all the the shallow embedding of mu ml into an aml based on the matching logic explained paper by uh, uh Shohong, Dorel, and, and, uh, and Grigore. Uh, and we also want to formalize this which is somewhat of a more theoretical result here that this embedding this shallow embedding of of uh, of mu ml into of many sorted ml into an aml uh, is indeed an embedding so that we can do 
So we can want to formalize the many sorted matching logic from scratch here separately, and then formalize this translation as to actually prove that any pattern from here is derivable also in uh, AML plus the theory of sorts and with also the, an automatic translation of the of the proofs. And this is what you're, we are currently working on. And after this, we will work on uh, uh, a system for importing language definitions from, from core into the lint formalization and then use that in order to actually verify some executions as as formal proofs in, in our formalization. I think the, the right thing right. to do here would be to formalize core in lean. The same way to formalize new uh, ML, mm -hmm. the many sorted variant yeah. in AML plus core. Mm -hmm. We should formalize the entire core to be you know, AML plus source plus production plus everything it has, mm -hmm. rules, context, configurations, yeah. and so on, right? And then we have a version of core, mm -hmm. which is defined as notation, as a shallow embedding in machine learning. Okay. And then try to reconcile the existing core, because the existing core, it has been defined simply ad hoc, okay, based mm -hmm. on whatever K was able to generate, whatever yeah. we were able to extract from K. We mm -hmm. already know it's unsound. Mm -hmm. We just don't yeah. use that on some yeah. to do bad things, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we should start bottom up here. We should start with AML and build things on top of AML, putting I core. see, yeah. Because then, so the problem with core, I tried to force, you know, the K team to come up with a definition of core in matching logic, you know, as notations. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually rejected my, <laughs> my proposal, right? Politely, they said we go no, no way, um, right? Because huh? that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, why it's a polite way of saying, that, you know, that he's not going to do that, all right? Uh, because that would require lots of changes and lots of tools in the infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? And I would have pushed for it if I knew exactly what code should be. Mm -hmm. right? But I was afraid that what if. I push the entire thing to do something, and that's not the right thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Then I take all the blame for good and for you. So that's why I think now it's an opportunity to get core right. Mm -hmm. okay. That's define core as notations, as a shallow embedding in uh, lean, right on the end of formalization. Mm -hmm. And once we are happy with it, once we can you know do some interesting proofs and so on, we'll feed it. We'll know when it's ready. Then we mm -hmm. go to the team and tell them, hey, this is core. Let's yeah, implement it. What? Have no the, uh, to do that. Is been on the board for last two years. Yeah, yeah. It's time to take that. But <laughs> so the product yeah. is done. He seems to have nothing to do now. Actually, try to. Look at him. He's a guy, you know, without any words. <laughs> All open <laughs> to take a big bus. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yes, I think Jan proposed some some modifications of core. This is something in the in the spirit you proposed, but uh, yeah, no, no, let's yeah. work together on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's uh, get us a platform into the mm -hmm. structure. Myself, Dorel here, and uh, let's get it right. right. We have everything you need now. To, to do mm -hmm. it. Cool. Uh, okay, so that's it. That that was it.